Hello, my name is Emre Kızılkaya. I'm a journalist and media researcher based in Istanbul. This video showed more than 10,000 images shared by 532 members of the Turkish parliament on Twitter last year. Uh, this video was part of my year-long study of Turkey's media landscape. And in this talk, I will show you a few more examples from this study. I will try to explain my approach for communicating complex data-intensive issues in a clear and engaging way for the public interest. Firstly, let me tell you why Turkey's media landscape is a complex political, economic and social environment where original data is scarce. As a remarkably harsh ecosystem for journalists, Turkey is actually not unique in any specific challenge. What makes it unique, I think, is the fact that uh, almost all possible challenges around the world can be observed in Turkey. It is like a laboratory. Because in Turkey, journalists are being jailed like in China, physically or virtually assaulted like in Russia. Uh, they are forced to self-censorship like in many Asian and African countries. Independent media outlets are shut down or heavily fined like in Iran. The cronies of the government capture newspapers and TVs like in Hungary and it, in Turkey it happened to my former company as well so I resigned from there. The public broadcaster has turned into a propaganda machine like in Romania and Bulgaria and independent journalists in Turkey are labeled by uh, ruling party politicians as traitors and the pro-government media spread fake news like in Serbia. And defamation laws in Turkey are weaponized by the ruling elites like they do in Poland, for instance. Hence, I have a sense of how uh, global events and trends affecting media freedoms and quality journalism, including data journalism, uh, are similar or dissimilar to the ones in Turkey. So, after serving as an editor for one of the largest media groups in Europe for more than 10 years in Istanbul, as I said, I resigned after the corporation was bought off by a crony of the ruling party. So I am currently managing Journal, a non-profit news platform for Turkey's next generation journalists, supported by the Journalist Union of Turkey and the European Union. I'm a vice chair and an executive board member of the Vienna-based International Press Institute, IPI, a global network for sharing a common dedication to quality journalism. I conducted the year-long study I talked about and then published the results in separate reports and articles for IPI and journal throughout last year. But from where a journalist should start investigating a complex issue in any country or across the world, I would like to talk about this first. Uh, first of all, the dilemma of data journalism is like the economic theory of scarcity. Data is, or are, or whatever you call it, unlimited. It is, it is unlimited, but a journalist resources like budget, time, etc. These are not unlimited. Journalism's basics can guide us here to find the right topic and how to process this topic. Uh, and the, the basics include concepts like the news value or the public interest. What is the news value? There are several definitions and factors for it. To simplify, we can argue that the data journalist should evaluate the impact, weight, usefulness, educational value and timeliness of the potential story. The journalist should also consider how the story is positioned vis-a-vis -vis the zeitgeist, the spirit of the time, as the public may eventually begin considering certain issues much more important or less important than in the past. For instance, climate change. Now, the zeitgeist uh, dictates the journalist to cover it more extensively, more deeply, because in the past it was not in the priorities of the public, uh, but now it is or, for instance, the pandemic for the past two years. Uh, the journalist should also consider what emotions the story can arouse. Human interest stories tend to attract public interest, the sympathy of individuals, motivation. More unusual reports, those that involve prominent individuals or conflicts, and the ones that are closer to the home of the audience, 
obviously have higher news value. Traditionally, it has been so. People also tend to prefer completeness in information instead of gaps. So in the elements of journalism, uh, which is a textbook in many communication faculties across the world, uh, American journalists Bill Kovach and Tom Rosenstiel state that journalists must make the significant interesting and relevant. While the news value and the public interest can help the data journalist to prioritize what is important, only her own skills and creativity can make sure that the story is presented in an engaging way. So I use this approach as a framework when, when dealing with data in journalism projects and in media research projects. Take our Turkey's News Deserts project published on journal last year. There was no comprehensive data on original local journalism in Turkey. So we used Python to code a web scraper, a custom web scraper and parse more than 1.1 million news articles from uh, some 6,000 six, six, six uh, Turkish news websites in which the names of more than 900 dis districts of Turkey, the administrative districts of Turkey, appeared for two weeks. And for data analysis, we used Tableau and a text similarity algorithm on Python to assess the originality of each article before visualizing the findings with data wrapper uh, as a choropleth map. We used data wrapper because it was convenient because it was uh, coming with the shape files of each Turkish district. Uh, other tools, free tools like for instance Flourish, which is also a great tool, uh, didn't have this capability and we didn't uh, want to uh, spend more time uh, with uh, creating the shape files of Turkish districts, which is not freely available in Turkey, interestingly. And the result was a story that reached millions of uh, people in Turkey and started to be used as a source in academia too, uh, because the findings uh, were significant, interesting and relevant, I think. Uh, the, the story showed that 85% of news articles published in Turkish are duplicates. Uh, original journalism, particularly in a number of local areas in Turkey, agonizes, especially in eastern Turkey, in central Anatolian Turkey, and in some parts of the inner uh, western Turkey. Uh, most of these news outlets obviously are just copying and pasting the, each other's content, and especially the content produced by news agencies. So production of original news is a problem in Turkey. This was the big picture of the production and distribution of Turkish news on the web. Uh, but this is a multifaceted issue and it required a more detailed analysis. So, as IPI Turkey, we produced an extensive report last year on the total reach and social media engagement of leading uh, independent news outlets in Turkey against the pro-government media corporations. We compared their reach, digital reach, their social media engagements on various platforms, on YouTube, Google, Twitter, uh, and again, there was no up-to-date original data. So we used various methods to get it, uh, to collect our own data. We again resorted to parsing the web, scraping social media platforms, and we also acquired unpublished data sets from related third parties like the uh, auditors of many of the leading news organizations in Turkey, uh, uh, an independent uh, digital traffic auditor uh, Poland, from Poland, Gimius. We also conducted surveys with uh, Turkish media executives and journalists, local ones and also the nationwide media outlets. And then we presented the results as scatter plots. Uh, we basically used free tools like Flourish again, but we customize it a little bit. Uh, we used bar charts, we, we also used data wrapper here, and time series charts. Uh, we also visualize the findings of the survey in which we had used the five point Likert scale. Uh, so one of the most visually appealing ways to, to visualize it uh, is in a tone of uh, a diverging uh, one, one color uh, visualization was used. Moreover, uh, we used sonification to compare the social media engagement of 
independent and pro-government outlets in Turkey. So let's listen to it. So, in a nutshell, IPI Turkey Digital Media report showed that all the platforms like Google uh, boosts the government's propaganda machine in Turkey. The leading news outlet, outlets now enjoy a comparable uh, public reach and social media engagement in this uphill battle. And they are also, these independent outlets are uh, searched on search engines uh, much more than the pro-government propaganda outlets which shows where the public's interest lies mostly at the moment and the public reaction to the report was remarkable again various parts of the report and most of the visualizations were turned into news stories by dozens of media outlets newspapers websites and i was hosted by tv and radio stations to comment on the findings the report was also discussed by members of the parliament in Turkey for several hours at the Digital Platforms Commission of the Turkish Parliament in December 2021. So, this brings us back to the video in the beginning uh, that you know shows showing the images uh, shared on Twitter by the members of the parliament. For a data journalist, showing the big picture in an interesting way may not be enough to fully explain a complex or significant issue. A more microscopic investigation can reveal equally important details for the public. In order to complete my year-long study, this is why I turned from news organizations to the individuals who produce or consume the news. Twitter is the primary platform for journalists, politicians and the audience segments uh, who can be described as news lovers. The most loyal consumers of news are on Twitter in Turkey, just like in anywhere in the world, probably. So firstly, I listed the top 100 journalists with the highest number of Twitter followers. I scraped the last thousand tweets of each of them and created a network map by using their engagement engagement relations with their readers and other journalists. For the network visualization, I used Gephi. Uh, the full results are not published anywhere yet, but let me summarize a key finding here. Turkey's independent journalists who stick to the universal principles and practices of their profession enjoy a much higher centrality on Twitter than the propagandists of the pro-government media corporations. I won't delve deep into what uh, centrality is, but I will just note that such uh, scientific academic concepts and tools, validated concepts and tools can be tremendously useful for the data journalists too. I'm fortunate to keep learning about them as a researcher at Galatasaray University in Istanbul, focusing on digital media as, I, as I'm writing my PhD thesis. So here is another interesting finding uh, coming out of the network visualization of Twitter engagement of Turkish journalists. We use, as I say, Atlas 2, uh, Force Atlas 2 algorithm for the layout of this network on Gephi. And like other uh, layout algorithms, it works like a physics engine, treating each node as if they have mass in proportion with their influence on, on the network. Uh, the, the whole network, which can be assessed uh, according to eigenvector centrality or some other measure. So the distance between these nodes can be decided depending on uh, their gravity uh, based on this influence. And the other interesting fact is something else though, not about the distances, which uh, it is about the colors. Uh, these colors are determined not by the layout algorithm like distances, uh, but they are determined by another statistical analysis on the modularity class of each node in this network. Simply put, uh, the clusters as shown uh, as shown in colors show us that 
uh, groupings between journalists in Turkey, at least uh, at least on Twitter, are somewhat surprising. Uh, the journalists of independent media or some say opposition media is not uh, divided according to ideological lines. Uh, two journalists who work for uh, for ideologically similar outlets can be found in different echo chambers on Twitter. Such echo chambers, uh, however, is much amplified in the pro-government uh, journalist clusters than independent ones. I should again mention that uh, some of these names, are, although we, I put uh, just the top 100 journalists on Twitter according to their, uh, the number of their followers, uh, there are many more notes here as you see because it includes uh, all the people uh, that can be fetched uh, that they engage with. So, for instance, uh, if a journalist is working for a news organization and sharing a lot of uh, the tweets of that news organization, then uh, that news organization is here as well, although we did not really look into news organizations in this particular network. Uh, similarly, it's same for pro-government media and uh, independent media. A final example is the video in the beginning. By looking into what the members of the Turkish parliament share on Twitter, I tried to present the viewers a microscopic view of an important audience segment's use of media. So this segment of media users, the members of the parliament, are also uh, the decision makers. They are, the, uh, they are making laws in the parliament. So how they share news, what sources they use, these are all important and relevant questions to be answered for the public. That's why I built another network map of how members of the parliament from various parties interact with each other and with journalists, as well as what content these MPs share from news websites or YouTube or any other digital source. After fetching all these images, and piece shared, I simply classified and visualized them by dominant colors. This approach can be likened to the New York-based Professor Lev Manovi's data analysis methods for describing cultural artifacts through a new visual language. So this is how I attempted to make this significant interesting with data visualization. And this was like eye-catching for many people because there were in this video especially there were a lot of human faces uh, that they are familiar with with some of them and i was able to show that uh, members of the parliament share a lot of uh, photos of president turkish president recep tayyip erdogan if they are from the ruling party and uh, so they want to show perhaps their uh, loyalty to the party lines my purpose was to present the public uh, with a big picture and many small pictures of news media in Turkey, hoping that it would raise awareness about and create social impact for the advance of the uh, freedom of the press, uh, which is vital for any democracy. Uh, so to quote Kovac and Rosenstiel's The Elements of Journalism, Storytelling and information are not contradictory. They are better understood as two points in a continuum of communicating. Most journalism, like most communication, exists in the middle. Uh, the journalist's task is to find the way to make the significant interesting for each story and finding the right mix of the serious and the less serious that offers an account of the day. Perhaps it is best understood this way. Journalism is storytelling with a purpose. So let me add, rephrase, uh, let me rephrase the last sentence to, to finish this talk. Data journalism too is storytelling with a purpose. Thanks for listening.